Hi everybody, it's Jim Pavet from Pure Ave Audio. If you like our videos, please subscribe. And uh, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about acoustics, microphones, uh, tell you a little bit about project I'm doing. Um, I actually am still majorly in the recording business and have a commercial studio and still record. And that's what allows me to, you know, give really good advice to people when I'm working, uh, you know, fluently with new technology and, and uh, mixing and, you know, the whole, the whole shebang. So anyways, I'm here in our showroom, which is also our major commercial studio. Um, we are working on a project right now that is a rock project. It also has full orchestration, some with samples of MIDI, some with real live instruments, anything from sax, clarinet, um, violin, cello, uh, all live. And that's kind of my strength is acoustic recording uh, compared to programming in a sense. Um, I do really well with acoustic stuff. So I'm going to show you a little bit what we're doing. So this rock project we're doing right now, uh, we're working on violin and cello. And for the last week, I've been putting in literally 12 hour days in the studio because some of the uh, musicians are in from out of town, uh, specifically Michael Ronstadt, who's actually Linda Ronstadt's nephew. Uh, one of the most phenomenal cellists I've ever worked with. Uh, it's almost like someone put a little, you know, rock demon inside of him and he could just jam with anything you want and be as classical as you want. Uh, major soloist uh, tears it up and then could do awesome, like, almost like feedback sounding, uh, you know, string sounds and stuff like that. So it's just amazing textures that could be in there. But let me show you around a little bit of what, what we're doing. So I'm cruising down to our ISO booths. We just renovated this ISO booth here with Vcoustics and Vcoustics makes some just amazing products which you can see behind me. Uh, we have the uh, cinema rounds that are in the uh, burgundy look and then we have uh, the uh, super bass extremes and also uh, some other diffusers in here. And what I'm using on the violin is a ribbon mic. And what's great is now with the acoustics that I have, this big, huge cloud pad up here, I could get rid of the back of that ribbon mic, the uh, figure eight pattern, and knock that out and get a nice, smooth sound on what sometimes is a scratchy violin and just get the perfect sound. So, you know, back in the day before this renovation, I just had some one inch foam pyramid up there and it was white to not clamp down on the room since it's a little bit of a smaller room. It's, it's really like nine by 10, so it's not that small, but uh, small in general, lower ceilings. But with this cloud up here, this is the best violin sound I've ever got. Uh, so that, between that and this, this ribbon mic, it's, it's just been great. So as you can see normally, I'm gonna run around here and give you some looks. So what we normally have is a Neumann U67 vintage we also have a Loughton Eden that's uh, on board, both tube mics. Um, we have this amazing window that goes all the way through. So what we had was the violinist in here, which his name's Nick. We had Nick in here, and we had Michael on the other side in the other uh, ISO booth, and they could face each other and be fully isolated. It's really great. And you could actually see uh, Nick's uh, violin here, which he's coming back today for some more maddening long sessions. But let me take you down the hall. Yes, it's the Beatles. Turn on some lights here. The first thing I did when I went to record cello is I knocked out my drums because the drums will definitely create some resonance and that resonance, it's slight, but all of a sudden it just it's almost like there's an extra reverb in the room. So I knock that all down and I make sure that every single drum has some kind of absorption on it to knock it out and make sure it's not resonating. Um, that includes even the bottom head. As you can see, there's a little piece of foam wedged on that. And even as I get closer here, you could actually hear a little bit of resonance still, but it's a lot better than it was. So what I've done is another ribbon mic. This just so happens to be the uh, Voodoo V1 SE Electronics based off the Rupert Neve RNR1. And 
I got that going into a Prime Acoustics Gobo just to knock out the back. I actually have a wind uh, shield on there because the position was actually in the way of a little bit of air conditioning blowing through, so that knocked out that issue. And then behind the cellist, I actually put some movable uh, foam walls just to knock out that room even a little bit more and get a nice intimate sound. So between all these things and having that door open so there's no direct reflection coming back at the cello, um, it really, really made a great sound. Now, I'll just show you why I wasn't using my R&R1 in the uh, violin room is because we actually have it set up on this amplifier and we're not 100% done doing tracking. And once I lock in a, an amazing sound for an album, I could leave that mic in place for possibly two or three months um, just to you know, be hardcore about it and make sure that my sounds are consistent. So we're going to go back into the control room. And now you can see that violin, cello, and everything's being recorded into our main system here, which we have everything from the PQ mastering EQ, um, the iron mastering EQ, uh, to, uh, for these channels, I've been actually using the uh, Anthony DeMary Labs ADL 700s, which are some of my favorite discrete mic pre's. And uh, they, this this channel is basically the Anthony DeMary Labs uh, preamp married with Presonus uh, EQ and uh, compression. I use slight compression, but I mainly use my distressor um, and you know, minimal EQ, because I'm usually miking stuff as correct as possible, so I don't need to use any EQ. And from there, we get some amazing sounds. So let me cue up some stuff for you. All right, so I have a project set up here that we're working on. Uh, my DAW of choice is Nuendo. It has been for ever since I started on DAW systems, tried out a bunch of different things, and, and also looked at the scientific side of it, you know, 32 floating point, um, things like that, back when... Pro Tools and everything was only 16-bit fixed, which meant it broke down really quick after about 16 channels of audio. Uh, the sound sound just uh, collapsed, soundstage. Um, you know, everybody started going to analog summing because that floating point issue. Uh, with Nuendo, you don't really have issues like that. The only reason you'd want to go to analog summing is if you need to warm something up or you want to insert stuff in the analog domain or you know things like that but it's not a necessity to get a good mix uh, compared to mixing in the box compared to out, out out of the box because of a faulty summing algorithm put it that way anyways what we have here is uh, looks like about uh, 10 12 tracks of drums uh, we have three tracks of bass which is same bass, but we have uh, direct cabinet. We also have a uh, that Getty Lee tone box, um, which is really cool. Nice little distortion on there. Uh, we have a Collings guitar. We have a Wechter guitar, acoustics. We have a Taylor 12 string, some extra parts. We got Fender. Um, sometimes we have a Gibson, but not in this song particularly right now. Uh, live uh, real organic piano. And then we have some Motif and uh, and uh, Nord uh, keyboard tracks, sometimes organs, uh, flute track also. Um, and then we have the kind of East-West Silver uh, edition going on, which I believe is samples from the London Symphony Orchestra or something as like. Um, trombones, French horns, tuba, trumpets. Uh, and then we have our organic violin and cello, I like to call it, or real violin and cello. Uh, we have some more samples of clarinet and oboe and our click track. So what's really cool is these projects start out really small and uh, subtle and beautiful. And then they build.
Just real beautiful paths. And then as the song goes through, it gets really big. And then really big. So the key to getting that great sound is to really get that awesome acoustics in your room. Make sure that you don't have all this phase coming off the walls or multiple microphones and things like that. That's going into your your uh, uh, you know recording, and that will give you a great cello, violin, or any kind of acoustic guitar sound. that's it for today. I just wanted to give you a little tidbit on acoustics and ribbon mics and how we apply and use them. Uh, we have plenty of Tech Talk videos that give you choices of how to uh, choose between gear that you're buying. We also have plenty of reviews of equipment that we sell that we do videos on. Uh, so hit the like button, hit the subscribe, um, you know, throw your comments below and uh, hopefully you like some of our videos. We're going to definitely do a lot more of these. Check us out at purewaveaudio.com.